Right, it's early February, it's freezing cold. Lakes like this one are still partly frozen up. What do you do to keep catching? The carp tend to be very lethargic at this time of year. They're shoaled up, you're not guaranteed to land on them. So what you can do instead is to opt for a really busy day's fishing. Plenty of bites, loads of silverfish, big roach, perch, things like that. I've been enjoying some really, really enjoyable matches recently by targeting these fish rather than sitting and, uh, and hoping for a carp. And I'm hoping to have a similar day today. Come to Westerly Lake at York. It's a venue I used to fish oh, 16, 17 years ago when I was a junior. And I said, I've not been since. I just had a tip off the other day from a friend of mine, Bob Roberts, who came here and had a massive bag of silverfish. It was a bit warmer than this, granted, but uh, he had a real, real nice set of fish and some big perch as well. So I'm going to give it a go today. Hopefully see what we can catch. Got loads of baits to try. I'm gonna run for a few different lines which we're gonna to fish to and I can't wait to get started. Let's get going. First line I'm gonna talk about fishing for commercial silverfish is a short pole. Now this is usually fished anything between sort of a top kit in one section, a top kit in two, top kit in three sections, so about four to eight meters out generally, uh, just at the base of the slope a lot of the time. And what you, what you can do with this line is you can loose feed it and it's a very, very good line for catching things like roach and eyed species which are going to come to loose feed, lo loose baits generally, not, not so much ground bait. So what you do is, basically it's, it's a good line to start on just to gauge what's in your peg. And you can loose feed it by hand just with like maggots or casters, things like that and build it up. This is, it's about sort of west of the lakes, it's, it's probably about four and a half, five foot deep here. It's only marginally shallower than much further out. So we're fishing in almost the deepest water, but on a short pole. And it's a great place to start while you, while you let your other sat lines, such as your skimmer lines longer, settle. Let's say you build it and build it up and it should get better and better as the day goes on. Okay, the next line I'm gonna talk about is my skimmer line. This is generally on a much longer pole, about 13, 40 meters out well out into the lake because you find with skimmer bream in the in the colder months they tend to sit a lot further out they tend to feed confidently in the, in the deepest water put you put a bit of distance between yourself and the fish and um, what i usually do with this i'll feed it with ground bait i might even feed it if it's going to be hard or if you know if, if you're going to keep swapping lines and things i might feed two of these lines but just to keep it simple today i'm just going to feed the one i'm going to feed it with ground bait to start with and let it settle the worst thing you can do with skimmer bream is to go straight in after them because what you'll do is put your ground bit in, bang on the top, you might get a couple of them but you haven't given the, the shoal time to settle and kind of graze over your bait so generally you, you, they'll spook uh, after a few fish whereas by putting your bait in, letting it settle for say 45 minutes, an hour, then going in you've given the fish fish chance to settle and you'll generally catch a lot more of them. Right, the final line I'm going to talk about is the edge. Now, this can be good, uh, especially for roach and things sometimes, or big roach if you've got a bit of depth and things, but this, this lake in particular is noted for some massive perch, so we're going to have a bit of a cheeky look for them a bit later, hopefully. Um, got some down this edge where we've got a few rushes and things. There's a good depth of about three and a half foot, you know, so there's a good depth there for the fish to, uh, to sit in. We've got a few interesting baits as well with us, such as prawns and lobworms and things, which tend to work well here. So we're going to give them a go. Big baits, big selective baits for the perch. and see what happens a bit later, hopefully. Just going to quickly talk you through my skimmer mix. Basically quite a dark mix because it's still clear the water, still very cold water. I've got Swimstin Black, great all around ground bait for this time of year. I've used it for absolutely donkey's years. I've also got some swim stim milled expander because I love to put expanders in my uh, ground baits for skimmers and F1s and things because I just think they absolutely love it. So it's important as I say swim stim is quite a sticky ground bait. Uh, it can be made into a paste and things when it's mixed wet. So it's important to use another kind of component with it just to let it break down a bit. What we're going to do, because I want to target skimmers on that line, I want to try and avoid roach a bit and keep the roach in the closer lines. I'm going to put some pellets in so I'll probably put a third of a third of a cup of pellets into a into a corner where I'm going to make the ball. I'm also going to put a good handful of casters in there as well. So those are quite inert inert baits which are going to go straight down 
not break the ball up. It also gives me the option to fish pellets as well. If I get pestered by nu nuisance fish, I can use expander pellets on the hook. Okay, so I'm just going to make a single big ball out of this. Because it's frozen today and I'm not really sure how it's, how it's going to fish and things are not fish, fished here for so long, I'm going to err on the side of caution. You can put a lot more bait in for skimmers if you expect a load and sometimes that's an advantage because it means you don't have to top up so quick. But I'm just going to go for the one big ball packed full of pellets and casters today, see how that goes, leave it an hour, see what happens. to do is I actually tend to feed twice so you know 15 20 maggots or something or, or less than that if it's hard twice over the top of the float and I, I don't know why that works it just does but what that tends to do is I think it just pushes fish further down further down the water column onto the bottom where they're much easier to catch than one handful which seems to bring them up in the water and I've been fishing this kind of this short line for 20-25 minutes now and I've had a few fish but I'm not really that happy with how it's going because I'm waiting for bites and already I'm thinking am I fishing too short so with this short line it's it's all about really gauging how far you're going to catch or catch best should I say because you might be able to catch well at uh, as I say on this length, length top kit with three sections of pole you might bag there but you might find you can take a section off or even two and still catch well However, at the other end of the spectrum, you could take those sections off and your catch rate could suffer. So it's all about gauging really the best distance you're gonna catch. I've just got a fish there, but that's taken quite a while. So already I'm thinking, would I be better off fishing further out? So I think I'm just gonna get the plummet on and uh, put a few sections on and, uh, and start again from there. Because I, th I just think with this clear water and with a camera around through, through no fault of his, I just think we're fishing a bit too close. <laughs> Session out here at Westerly Lake. I've gone a bit further and instantly it's been better. It's like getting loads of bites, a few bites on the drop as well, which uh, I've actually put a shallow rig up. I've also uh, had quite a few problems, quite a few smaller fish, so I've started loose feeding a few casters. And again, there's a bite on the drop there straight away, so I'm going to pick that shallow rig up in a minute. But fishing a bit further out, just, just uh, in slightly uh, deeper water a bit further out from the bank just seems to be better so uh, I'm about 10 meters out Let's see if we get any more of these roach that's some nice roach up to about six or eight ounce so far I'm fishing sort of uh, grade five and grade six elastics just set quite pingy through uh, through a match top three just perfect really for these slightly deeper commercials there's another one Swinging. 
I also use, um, notice I've got a puller in, even though I'm using fives or sixes elastic, I still use a puller on commercial fisheries, this is a puller bung, purely for the fact that you sometimes get carp and on bigger fish and uh, if you haven't got a puller in you're going to be there with sort of top fives, top sixes of pole up in the, up in the air like that, it's going to be a nightmare, so always use a puller on commercial fisheries, great bit of kit. Now let's try the shallow rig. For this, it's a bit of a lighter float than the uh, the deck rigs. It's a 4x10, it's an R, RW Maggie, very slim float with a carbon stem. And I've basically shotted it with uh, just strung out number 11s from about two thirds of the way down. I'm going to try it about three foot in the five foot deep swim. Just gonna lay the rig in horizontally because I'm fishing shallow and just hold on to it as I fire out some bait. Just keep hold of it. See what happens. Are there any fish shallow? Oh, oh, straight away. Got a uh, Slightly finer grade five elastic on the shallow rig because it's because it's a shallower rig. The fish have got more water to kind of run down into, so it's lighter elastic. This might be a, a netter. This cut that for a roach. Another nice, beautiful condition commercial fishery roach here at Westerly Lake. Beautiful condition, about six or eight six ounces. Loads of those so far today, and uh, with fish of that stamp, it's not uh, not hard to see how you can build a weight up. Fishing single red maggot on a. Uh, I've actually increased my hook size. This did start on a um, a 22 Guru F1 maggot hook, which is more like a 20. But I bumped a few fish, and I was getting a few bites. So I've uh, I've actually on, on on all these rigs now. I'm fishing a 20 Guru. Maggot, which is probably about an 18 in reality, they're quite a big size. Loose feed a few maggots over the top. So that maggot's now going down through the layers on that strong light rig. Light rigs are best for roach, really, especially when you're fishing up in the water and things like that. Oh, there's another fish. Slightly smaller this time. With this kind of rig, it's very simple. If you're missing bites, you come up in the water so you take some uh, depth off. If you're not getting bites, you simply go a bit deeper. You can also alter your shot in a bit, you can bolt your shots if it's really good. But today, it's a, as I say, it's still frozen this lake in the corner to our left there. So I'm just fishing very, very light and very slow fall, just trying to entice the fish, fish to, uh, to bite. Crazy, really, that we're catching catching shallow like this on the February day when it's frozen. This might be another net of this. It's lovely fishing. This really, really enjoying this. Really makes a change to being been sat there behind a bomb rod, looking at a quiver tip, praying for a carp. What I'm going to do as well in a minute. Because we've left that skimmer line for an hour, I'm going to have a look on that skimmer line and see if anything's moved over that ground bait as well. Okay, I've just had a go on the skimmer line and just with a couple of maggots over that ground bait with, uh, with pellets and casters in. I didn't have a bite on the first go, which, uh, which told me that either there's no skimmers here or the fish had actually mopped up that initial ball. So uh, so what I've done is I, I've quickly topped up with a, um, a little kind of golf ball of the same mix, exactly the same mix. Gone straight in, the first bung I've had a skimmer. 
not a particularly big skimmer, but uh, it tells me, tells me there's a few about. I'll say a couple of bubbles did come up earlier as well. So I've, I'm just uh, fishing for um, fishing for skimmers a lot differently to how I fish for roach. So uh, more bait, but less often, and then waiting and a much more bulk down, a heavier rig with a bodied float as opposed to a slimline float that you use for roach just to anchor the bait in place really so, uh, so skimmers will take it and uh, just bang on in line with my marker at full 13 metres I'm just seeing if I've, I've just had a roach as well which wasn't a good sign so I'm just seeing if I uh, can get another, another skimmer off that little top up ball Got my float really dotted down as well, which is really important for, for both roach and skimmers at this, this time of year because sometimes bites are just literally little tremors, don't even take your float under, so it's very important to, uh, to do that. Got a couple of back shots on above the float, number 11s, just strung out about 6 inches and, and 10 inches above the float just to uh, hold it in place as well. Just anchored a few, few inches over depth as opposed to just tripping for roach. Just seeing if there's another skimmer there, but oh, a bit of a lift there. There we go. That feels skimmery. There's a lift bite that. And again, it's, it might be a roach. Oh, no, I think it's a skimmer. Just take your time as well with skimmers, especially in winter, because if you try to ship them back too fast they will come off all right what we got here yeah another skimmer there we go one's wrapped around Nice uh, example of a little skimmer bream there, probably about 8 to 10 ounces. We did have to wait a while from him, so if this was a match, I'd probably be thinking I'd be better off fishing for the roach, which I'm going to go back to soon. about rigs I've used today. For roach on the bottom up in the water it's an RW Maggie slimline float with a carbon stem so it's very very slim not much resistance and you can fish it through the water as that carbon stem comes down to settle you can see any bites. So a very light 4x10 for shallow we've, we've caught really really well in the sort of the last hour of the session at three foot deep really well the fish have come up and we fish that light float with strung out shot on the bottom, a bit of a different story, it's a bulk and either two or three droppers. Depends how well the fish are feeding. I mean, if, if it's hard, then three droppers is probably better. Skimmers, a bit of a different story. You're fishing with your bait anchored on the bottom. So I always prefer a bodied float for skimmers unless it's really, really shallow. So for this five foot, I've got a 4x14 Malman Speedy, my friend Speedy. Nice body, wire stem. One and a half mil tip dotted right down, and that that's just to anchor it in place really for the skimmers because they like a still bait. Bulk of number tens and two droppers again. Well, what a fantastic few hours fishing we've had here at Westerly Lakes near York. They're not usually allowed keep nets here, but we've got kind permission from the owners to use one for for two hours. So believe it or not. This was in just over two hours. There must be over 20 pounds there. We've had some lovely conditioned roach. I mean, that, look at that for an average stamp. A few big skimmers and things in there, caught in the long pole. Just all in all, loads of bites. This time of year, you really can't go wrong with a net like that. So just put the tactics I've, uh, I've, I've detailed today into practice. Maggots and casters loose, fed slightly shorter ground bait a bit longer and you can really bag up with a lovely catch of fish like this on a winter's day. Absolutely stunning. Let's get them back. <laughs>